Hello, Wisconsin. Welcome to As Goes Wisconsin, the 11 o'clock hour and our Friday, because we will be we will be having reruns tomorrow and Friday because I am headed to uh, Vegas to celebrate my husband and his twin sister's 40th birthday. And I have joked that um, my gift to them is tolerating the heat and their drunken debauchery <laughs> while seven and a half months pregnant uh, in Vegas. And You're so a good wife. don't expect anything else. <laughs> but in uh, the bottom of the hour, if you have a good Vegas story, we want to hear we want to hear from you. Uh, but we also want to hear from you right now. Have you seen the Barbie movie? And if so, thoughts? 844-967-2789. And even more importantly, if there was going to be a supper club Barbie, what accessories would she come with? Oh, that's <laughs> a good question. I had someone, I think I, I put a, a clip of when we talked to Professor Christine Whalen the Friday that it was coming out and we were talking, you know, we were talking about Barbie and her cultural significance and everything. And someone left a comment on the TikTok clip that we put up that we need a supper club Barbie. <laughs> and I was like, Oh man, if I could make, if I had the talent to make like go get a Barbie and like make a little old fashion and like a little fish fry and maybe relish, some tray. relish tray. I'm trying to think like what else, what else would supper club Barbie look like or what would she come with and do you have any resources that i can make this happen so i can make a video about it because i really want to know and normally i would say i just try to like act I, if i really had the time and the effort i'd just go get a blonde wig and like act out supper club barbie but well that's a little ambitious right now. <laughs> uh but 844-967-2789 have you seen barbie if you have what are your thoughts uh or and or what would Supper Club Barbie look like? Eight four four nine six party. Um, Jane, you have not seen Barbie yet. Not yet. I'm still going to wait a couple weeks. You're waiting until it dies on. Although I will say, we went on Saturday night at five, and it was not a packed theater. Oh, cool. So Maybe you I'll, could I'll you could probably and a lot of the a lot of the theaters now you can book your seats ahead of time, so you can see how full it's going to be. That's all. I, you know, afternoon. Maybe I'll I'll slide in some late afternoon. And it is hot. It. Get out of the heat. Yeah. Um. But I saw it over the weekend, and I was not alone. Barbie is uh, now closed. Maybe by the end of this week, we'll have closed in and surpassed a billion dollars. Wow. But two weekends in, and Greta Gerwig's global phenomenon has already grossed. This was as Monday as of Monday, seven hundred seventy-five million dollars uh, at the international box office, putting it just days away from hitting the billion-dollar mark. So, no solo woman director has ever had a movie exceed that threshold. So well, she well will, done, Greta Gerwig. will be the first. And she's like my age. Yeah. She, I don't even think, she, I don't think she's 40 yet. No, she's, she's still pretty young. She's wildly talented. Um, and Oppenheimer also had a second, a really impressive second weekend. I'm still excited to go see that. I don't know when I'm going to be able to see it, but you know, I liked it. I thought it was super fun. I thought, you know, the message for the message for me, I thought was really clever in the way that it was presented um, and the things that it looked at. Was it re for me revolutionary? No, no. For me, was it the most political movie I've ever seen? <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> I would say you see any Adam McKay movie and it's a lot. But <laughs> it's a lot more uh, overt than I would say this movie is. But what it certainly is, is looking at, through the lens of dolls, the idea of one gender dominating. And in the world of Barbie, as the tagline says, Barbie is everything. He's just Ken. He's and, a secondary character. And that is, and but the, this is the secondary character. I mean, this is the thing that's so funny to me about the conservative critique of this movie right now is that like Ken has a full character arc. Like he has a beginning, middle and end Barbie, not to give it away, but like they have a, a come to Jesus moment as far as like things that they understand about each other. And in so much of what the, the movie is as far as where Ken and Ken's plural start is that they are only, they only exist to serve Barbie and they only, feel validated with her attention 
versus having a like a feeling like their full humanity of individuality and their own person being their own person and being valued and the point of it i see it as you know that is sometimes how women get treated in our real world right and that we're saying both are bad and it's not that men are bad it's that this idea that your gender dictates your place in society is bad and I think that's the thing that feels like it's getting lost in the fray is that like movie is actually saying like, no, 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 we want men to be fully um, realized. realized humans as well, just like we want women to be. And so it's interesting just how much is getting, I don't know, misconstrued, is, is misconstrued in, in the movie and in the like cultural backlash that's happening. And I actually read, uh, you know, a take this morning from a conservative writer who took his his daughters who were very excited to see it and he was like he was expecting to like roll his eyes and hate it and he was it was fine like I, and he really said he's like i don't know why you know and so it it feels to me and it's interesting because i was thinking about this in context of last week when we were talking about the Jason Aldean song and like in in a song that you know was probably mediocre but skyrocketed because of so much attention and i don't know how much of that like how many people who are subscribing to, you know, are going to see it just because of the conservative critique of it in the same way that like in a, the Jason Aldean song, I feel like people are embracing the song because of the backlash to it. Oh, for sure. Versus them just thinking like, oh, this is a great song. And I'm like, I wonder how much of this is just the, the uh, same coin on the opposite side. And I don't think it's as much because that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money to spend uh, to just go hate watch something <laughs> but uh, or just do it out of spite for the conservatives of like, I'm going to see this movie because you told me not to, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> and I'm not sure that's happening. But um, it is interesting as, as just hearing what the dismay is. And I, and I certainly just don't get it. So if you've seen the movie and you didn't like it, or you saw the movie and you loved it, I would love to hear from you. 844-967-2789. Brady on the YouTube Live says, yes, I have seen Barbie twice. Seen it a third time this weekend. Big fan. Laughed out loud in the theater so much. I did laugh out loud. Did you? Yeah. Well, that's always a good sign. Well, you know, and it's also what's fun about it is, I don't know, I and this is why I liked it. I feel like it did lots of things. It in one hand played homage, like it like paid homage to Barbie and all the weird <laughs> Barbies that have existed. Like there was some deep cuts in there of Barbies that I didn't. What I didn't realize, I didn't. I didn't remember there was a Midge Barbie that was pregnant. Oh, she was pregnant. She was pregnant. What? So Midge was pregnant, and then she got discontinued. So I really missed my opportunity to dress as Midge. Oh. <laughs> as we went with our friends, obviously. And so they had, like, they there was little tributes to, there was also, at one point, Barbie's dog that, like, actually little, like, left little pellets and, like, pooped. Oh. And so that was a part of the, the movie. And it was fun because some of them I did not remember. But there was, I see this BuzzFeed article right now of all the weirdest Barbies that ever have come into existence. One include, one of which was not in the movie but is on this list is Shaving Fun Ken. Where literally I did, and I did have that one. And it was like with water. It was like some kind of like erasable sticker on his face <laughs> that if you shaved him, his beard went away and then it came back once it dried. That's weird. <laughs> and um, and so there was like very deep cuts about the dolls themselves. But I also feel like what they did well was kind of goes back to what we talked about before I had even seen it with Professor Whalen of the juxtaposition of what Barbie has been in our culture and our, in our world of like, on the one hand they had this doll who, and this is like how the movie, like, you know, they talk about the fact that prior to Barbie, all of the dolls for young girls were baby dolls. Yes. And so somehow that's also saying like, by wanting a different doll besides a baby doll was anti-mother, which it's like, it's not. And so whatever. And so, you know, at a time when, as we've said before, women couldn't have credit cards, women weren't buying their own houses. Women weren't necessarily being pilots and CEOs and 
president, there was this doll that was literally doing all of those things. And so in like that, that is a real, very real conversation as far as like Barbie's empowerment simultaneously with the perfectionism and the unrealistic expectation of what Barbie looks like. And like they cover the gamut of that conversation in the movie, which in like a really clever way, which I think is what else do you want from a Barbie movie? Well, right. Do you just want Bar like, do you want it to be a kid's movie where like Barbie just goes on an adventure? Which is fine. It's just a very different movie. And I don't know if that's what some people, you know, I saw one critique that was like, well, this was a movie about Barbie made by people who hate Barbie. And I was like, I don't, I, I didn't take that away. I think it's a very thoughtful critique of one of the biggest cultural, like, goalposts, like, like, for sure, like, icons, for lack of a better word, of the last 80 years. Oh, absolutely. 70 years. Absolutely. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this 844-967-2789. I also, I'll come back and I have some more of the weirdest Barbies and see if you remember those and some of the funniest tweets I've seen in reaction to the movie. So we will come back with that and your texts and your calls 844-96-PARTY. We're talking Barbie. Let's go party. There you go. Good cue. This is As Goes Wisconsin. <laughs> Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. I am Kristen Bry. She is Jane Madnair. Reminder that we are giving away our last set. Yes. I guess two to four tickets uh, for the state fair at the end of the show at 11.50. So if you would like to win those, call back then 844-967-2789. You can't lose. You can't lose. It's only fun. It's the best game. We have to figure, maybe we'll figure out other ways to keep it going. I like that. The games that we can't lose. Games you can't lose. Instead of just trivia questions where people feel bad if they don't have the right answer. Um, we were talking about Barbie and I'm asking if you've seen it and what your thoughts are of it um, or your general thoughts. I mean, because it is it is in the conversation. It's in the news every day as far as someone else has, a, has opinions on it or thought pieces on it and people's reaction to it and what the numbers are. And, and it, so it is um, it is as big as. A Marvel movie. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's interesting as far as some of the critique that's been is like, well, it's like super capitalist. It's like, what do you think? What do you think every superhero does? You don't think every Disney movie has the like millions of dollars of merch and, and toys and stuff that goes with it. Star Wars is, do you know how much Absolutely. stuff exists as far as like things you can buy in like place of like in part of celebrating the movie? Like, this is what we do. It's just most of that is gender neutral or for boys there's just it doesn't happen very often that is very feminine 844-967-2789 mike from sheboygan has been hanging on the line good morning mike did you did you see barbie no i haven't seen it but my my adult daughter and i got into a big discussion about it because i i called her up and i was like so you know last i remember barbie was a bad thing because it gave little girls a bad attitude as to how they should be I said, and I know they did a bunch of stuff to make it not a bad thing. I said, but all of a sudden, Barbie's a good thing. And she's like, well, Dad, actually, it's not a child's movie. It's PG-13. Mm -hmm. So she sent me a bunch of clips here and there, here and there, here and there. And she's right. There's a lot of adult comedy in there. So it's not really a child's movie. And I'm from the clips I've seen, I look at more as like, it's more like a, a Talladega Nights for how NASCAR people looked at Talladega Nights. So oh, that's an Barbie interesting people, comparison. The Barbie movie, it's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek type thing. That's an interesting comparison. I would say Talladega Nights was more satire slash parody. Yes. But I, and I, I say that as someone who's not a NASCAR fan. So it's like, I didn't, I don't understand. I, I wouldn't have been able to good, a good judge of how much is making fun of NASCAR versus making fun and celebrating NASCAR. Cause I would say Barbie is, Barbie's doing both. Like there's certainly things of making fun of like, like I said, like all the weird Barbies that have existed and that like, got discontinued right. while also like, the conversation around it. So after your right. discussion with your daughter, did it make you want to go see it? No, I don't really want to go see it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, really, I'm not a big movie. I'm not a big movie go see or anything because of the expense of it. All it That's all it, fair. But, I mean, and it is. Come on, it's Barbie. I'm a dude. <laughs> <laughs> would, I think, would, I, would, I, would I take my 12 or 13 year old granddaughter? If she really wanted to see it, nobody else would. Yeah, probably. Okay. okay. No, I'm not going to see it. I just, I was just talking with my daughter about, you know, 
I thought Barbie was bad. And all of a sudden, Barbie's good. The people will make up my mind for me. And then she just informed me that, well, no, it's they're not saying Barbie's good. It's kind of a satire movie, Dad. And you know, and you know, after seeing the clips, I'm like, well, this is sort of like Barbie lovers are going to look at this sort of the same way NASCAR fans looked at Talladega Nights. Someone will be like, no, we're not like that at all. And the other ones will be like, oh no, we're exactly. <laughs> That's Hilda great. Knows. <laughs> Thanks so much for the call, yeah, Mike. All right. Have a great day. Um, that's that's a really interesting comparison. It is. It is. As far as any of any of those types of movies where you are, you know, and I I kind of think about that. It, of course, where my mind just went to now is almost like exactly what so much of like Charlie Barron's humor is. It is both the celebration of and the recognition of. Wisconsin culture while you know making a couple jokes making a couple jokes of and it's what's funny about it is the fact that you can see yourself inside of it and you know that guy or you you know you're related to that guy who does who says those things or does those things um and so but because he's from here and he's of that he can make those jokes where it's not offensive and and making fun of Wisconsin culture, he's in on the joke. Yeah, don't don't be doing that if you're from Illinois. <laughs> it probably. May I mean, not- there's still Midwest, like there's still Midwest culture. Don't be doing it if you're from like Connecticut, for sure, <laughs> or California. If you don't know, if you can't point to Wisconsin on a map, you can't make those jokes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but I thought I I saw a roundup of some of the great tweets. Um as far as response tweets, X's, whatever the heck they're called now. But I thought this was interesting. It said, look, I don't think Barbie was or needed to be subversive, but I will say that no, not that this, this is not the one that I wanted. There was one about um, Barbie is not particularly feminist. Oh, where? No, there was one about, well, now it's gone. <laughs> What's going on with X? Why can't I find it? Um, it was basically saying how, how are you going to say that Barbie is uh, anti-man? But Oppenheimer is fine. Sorry, but who killed more men? <laughs> it's a little dark, but a it's little. true. Well, yes, it that would be accurate. Um, and so it's funny that every pink covered woman, woman at this theater greeted one another with enthusiastic, hi, Barbie. And I feel like I've transcended from this plane to a feminist dreamscape. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I just, but also... If Barbie is too feminist for you, might I recommend almost every other movie ever made? <laughs> Good point. Um, I can't believe Barbie made, uh, I can't believe they made Barbie woke. All the boys were into Barbie before they had to go and make it political. <laughs> what? This is, she's joking. Okay. And so. Um, you never know these days. But it's also, there's one that makes, it's like Barbie also was always been before we had the term woke. I mean, she's also she's always been inclusive. Like the first Black Barbie predate is is was a long time ago, and so it's literally been decades of trying to make dolls that appeal to as many people as possible. And so the idea that Barbie was ever about like being a trad wife is missing the point. All right, when we come back, I want to hear your stories about Vegas. Eight four four nine six seven two seven eight nine. That's eight four four nine six party. This is As Goes Wisconsin. Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. I'm Kristen Bry. She is Jane Matnair, and I am about to step into the sauna. Yes. Let's see. How hot is it supposed to be in Vegas this weekend? Uh, 110. Let's see. Right now it's 85 degrees, but it's also only 930. In, no, 830. It's, it's 930. Is it two hours behind us? I don't know. Uh, let's see what the, the heat. Uh, so high of 100 tomorrow. High of 101 on Friday, high of 103 on Saturday when we come home. Woof. Woof. Uh, Yes, but I am going to Vegas. We're leaving this afternoon. Uh, My husband is turning 40 along with his twin sister, and they spent their 30th birthday in Vegas, so they thought they would do a repeat. Ah. I'm hoping that it does not look as, uh, what I've heard was as debaucherous as their 30th birthday, because everyone's hangovers are a lot worse now. And uh, I obviously can only partake in so much. Because um, I don't like gambling. I'm I'm a big fan of my money. Uh, I can't party, which is what I would normally do. Because, you know, 
the baby. She's, the baby's coming. still she's still in there. She's still baking. Um, I am gonna go to the spa. That'll be nice. We're gonna have a pool day. And I insisted that we get a cabana so I can get out of the heat if needed. Absolutely. And uh, in general, I'm sure it'll be a good time. We have a really fun group of friends going, but it made me uh, interested in hearing your best and worst, best or worst Vegas stories. Uh, Maybe something at the time that was very fun is looking back and now it's a little embarrassing. (laughs) But 844-967-2789. What are your thoughts on Vegas? Uh, It's not for everyone. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But certainly my first time ever in Vegas, what I'll remember, I was in, it was the summer I was moving from Los Angeles to Berkeley and my group of friends in LA, we had uh, rented a houseboat on Lake Mead. Oh, nice. And we spent one night in Vegas before we all went to, we drove from LA to Vegas, spent one night there and then went to the, the, got our houseboat, which was very, very fun. I bet. But I remember... And not that L.A. was cheap. Maybe just the places that we went in L.A. were cheap. I was 22 and I bought a round of shots because we were at some club. And my 22 year old brain went to go pay for four shots and it was seventy five (sighs) dollars. And I was like, excuse me, what? Oh, my God. (laughs) And this was 2008. So I can only imagine what I can only imagine what four. I think it was four shots of chilled Patron. And it was seventy five dollars. <laughs> wow! I was like I'm a I'm a broke college student. I can't pay for this. I help me. I'm poor. And, and that was like my my entry. I was like, I'm not buying drinks for the rest of the night. I'll just be not hungover tomorrow. <laughs> um, and I haven't spent. I haven't. Vegas has never been like my go to place because, like I said, I don't really gamble. And you know, I know there's good shows. We're not seeing any shows this time around. But I would love to hear from you, 844-967-2789, on either your best or your worst Vegas story. Do you have any good Vegas stories? I've only been there twice. Okay. And the first time was after my father passed away. And he and my mother used to go to Vegas once a year. That was what they did and loved it. And, and you know, just for a long weekend. And so a couple of years after he was gone, some of my brothers and sisters and I took mom out there. Okay. for a weekend, which was fine. And then at one point I was meeting a friend from California in Vegas and I was on my own for the first night. Cause he wasn't coming until the next day. And I just, I, I don't gamble. I'm like you, I like my money. And I, it's also, I don't know how, like, I don't well, know. And that's, that's I, part feel, of it I have no confidence of like, I know what I'm doing. Right. I feel like I have any edge in this whatsoever, even though you don't, cause the house always wins. Right. So because I, I'm this, I'm the same way with you. I, I Blackjack intimidates me. All of the card games intimidate me. So I went and hung around the craps table. Okay. And I thought, I'll just pretend that I know what I'm doing. And I did whatever the guy, you know, the guy who was winning on the table. So I just did what he did. But in the lead up to that, there's a big slot in the middle of the table where you give them your 50 or your 100 or whatever. And they put it down in the slot and then they give you the chips. Do you remember the scene from Ghost? where Patrick Swayze has got a check for like $4 million from this person who helped murder him. Anyway, he gives the check to Whoopi Goldberg and he makes her give it to nuns. Oh yeah. And she's like, "Ah, that's my, and he's like, give him the check, give him the check. And so she finally gives them a check. That's how I felt when my $50 was going down that slot. That you were giving it to nuns? No, that I was it's like, <laughs> no, I can't. Don't make me give this to you. It's bad. It's bad. I want my 50 back. Did, and you, did you win anything? No. I'm sure I did. A, I, you know, this is a long time ago. I must have done well enough to stay alive for a little bit. Okay. But as you said, ultimately, you play long enough, the house will win. Yeah. That's why it's really hard to bankrupt a casino. I'm just throwing that in. Yeah. And well, supposedly that is, you know, people who have gambling addictions or, you know, or specifically what I've heard of when Michael Jordan was kind of in his prime. And and it's like he was such a competitive person that he literally thought he could beat the house. That's that's And that's why, like, he would go so far because he's like, I'm going to I'm going to come back because like that, like competitor mentality like buddy it's not set up like that the 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 game is rigged (laughs) um 
But yeah, I think everyone we're going with has has said that they have a set a limit. Like they're leaving their debit card at home. Well, that's good. And there's like they're bringing X amount of cash that this is their gambling money. And once it's gone, it is gone. You got to stick with that. And so um, but yeah, so I was I'm interested in if you have any good Vegas stories, if you ever won a ton of money, lost a ton of money. Got married in Vegas. That was was that a mistake? Yeah. 844-967-2789. But it was also my last time being on a plane until this kid comes. And so my doctor. <laughs> what did she say? So I'm I'll be 30 as of today. I'm 30 weeks pregnant today. And I had my doctor uh, m- m- most recent doctor's appointment last week. And so and I'm friends with my doctor, but she she said, so just so you know, I have to tell you this. You know, if if baby comes in Vegas. Baby stays in Vegas. Don't bring her back. Well, no, that you, I mean, if she's 10 weeks early, oh, you can't just bring your kid home to because right. you don't live there. Like right. the, it's going to be in a Vegas hospital until she's ready to travel. And she's like, you have no risk signs to say that that's going to happen. Everything looks good. But like, I have to tell you, oh, for sure, that if you go into labor to, 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 10 weeks early, like, you, you're not coming home. Like you're sticking in, you're staying in a Vegas hospital to, to with your kid. And I was like, okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, so we are, we are running that risk, but I, I, my compression socks are packed and I am planning to uh, walk the aisles. Like she told me to uh, on the plane. Make, luckily the it's, circulation going, for the circulation going, luckily it's not that far of a, of a flight, but um, uh, you know, doing, doing the things that they told us to do. So, Eight four four nine six seven two seven eight nine eight four four nine six party. Tom from Cedarburg. Good morning, Tom. What do you want to what do we, What do you want to share with us? Hi, ladies. Um, well, my youngest brother. I was in Vegas about ten years ago, and he met a gal at the bar at one of the casinos, and uh, he came home with her. And uh, she was supposedly an attorney and was going to pay her way. Well, she never paid a dime for the next year that she stayed with him, and. <gasps> Yeah, and could 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 she drink too? Oh my God! So wait, he she brought was, her home from Vegas, and she moved in with him, yeah. and he just like yep. paid for her for a year. Yeah. Yep. How did it end? Um, she went uh, back, I think, and met a sister of her sister of hers that I, I think lived out there or something like that. But um, she was half Russian and half German or something. And boy, could she drink? Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> she knew how to spend other, other people's money. <laughs> well, and and coming from yeah. coming from yeah. Wisconsinite, Tom, that this woman can drink, that is really saying something. That is saying something. So wait, how did your face oh, was yeah. everyone trying to warn your brother, be like, buddy, what are you doing? Was he just was he just like smitten and thought he was in love with her? Uh well, she could talk. Um and um she was quite um um shapely and shapely good looking and real smart. <laughs> okay. But um, she she never worked a day when she uh, lived with him. But um, <clears throat> she always promised she would, but she it, it never happened. And did but, he finally? Um, nothing did he, happens. With, did he finally just get you fed up at the bar? You know. Yeah. Did he finally just get fed up and said, "You have to go"? Yes, that's finally what it came to. And, okay. Well, and is know, he, it was quite quite interesting. That and, is interesting. And and is he single to this day? Um. Yes, but he um. He has a son now, so things are how much different. So. All right. That is uh that's a, that's a good story, Tom. Buyer beware of the, of the, who you <laughs> well, pick up in Vegas one one. and who you bring home from Vegas. Thanks so much yeah. for the call, Tom. 844-967-2789-844-96. Party if you want to check in. Um, well, and some of the other things I found this. So since I am getting on a plane, do you have any rules, like unspoken rules that you no, like, cause you're getting on a plane at the end of the month. You're going, you're going on a much longer uh, flight than yeah, I am. We're going to, we're you're, going overseas. You're going to Europe. Are there any rules of airplane etiquette that you abide by? Well, and this is going to sound really odd and it, okay. It is really odd, but my husband, we always fly coach. Okay. And we always request the last seat in coach. Like by the bathrooms. Yes. Because that means. No one can kick the back of our chairs. Got it. I don't have to worry about infringing on the person behind me, their space. Can I, most of those seats I didn't think you could recline from. They're, yeah, I mean, it's not, but reclining in those seats, 
I don't think is very restful. Anyway. Anyways, I, I don't. And and usually there's only two, so nobody gets stuck in the middle, which is a curse when you fly. Huh. huh. That's that's an interesting hack. Yeah. Do you ever have a situation where the bathroom is um a little smelly? Hasn't been a problem all right. in all these years. All right. And trust me, if we had the money, that would not be my, my choice <laughs> because flying is now torture. I know. It, it used to be fun, but flying, flying I, coach is not fun. Is not fun. I no. think my, my brother, who has lots and lots of miles on United, so he's constantly either getting upgraded to business or first class or what they, I think his last trip from New York, maybe it was New York to Milwaukee. I don't know. One of his last flights, he just sounded like such a <laughs> was he crabby d bag because he was like he had to ride coach and he was just like I can't believe people travel like this. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes, because try it's uh, expensive. It is expensive. But do we have time to play a couple of the the? For, there was a CNN video of unspoken rules when you're traveling on a plane, and I was interested. You and I could say which ones we agree with and which ones we were like I don't know. Take a listen. There are definitely unspoken rights on an airplane seat. The window seat is pretty simple, gets the right to the window. If they would like the shade up, they keep the shade up. The aisle seat cannot tell the window seat person to put the shade down. Agree. I, I would agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, I, I no think you can ask that. politely, but it's ultimately up to the person in the window seat. Yes. What they want to do. Yes, it is. Number two. The aisle seat, this is my favorite seat. I love it because I can be a free range passenger. It feels like I have more space. You just got to watch out for the cart. See, I feel like I, I've, now that I travel with Mike, he, since he has longer legs, he gets the aisle seat. But you do have to watch out for the cart. Yeah. I think I might get the aisle seat today, though, because I'm the one who has to get up and walk the aisles. So I think that's a wise did, I have not told him yet that yet, but we'll see. All right, number three. The middle seat, they get anything they want. Huh. Namely, two of the armrests. If the window seat and the aisle seat people have their arms here, you do have every right just to kind of slowly push them off. I, I think that's dangerous. I think that's dangerous. I, when I saw that ooh. one, I was like, how do you passive aggressively push your arms against strangers and say, no, 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 no. It's mine. The armrests are mine. I, I don't know. That one feels. Yeah. And, and I'm going to go with one hard and fast rules of that. A guy named Tom Nichols says on Twitter all the time, no bare feet. And no clipping your toenails. No. <laughs> Boy. All right. 844-967-2789. We got two to four more tickets to give away. If you want to play for state fair tickets, call now. 844-96-PARTY. This is As Goes Wisconsin. Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. I am Kristen Bry. She is Jane Madnair. And we are rounding out this week's final show because it's going to be a rerun tomorrow and, and Friday. We'll be back on Monday um, with giving away a couple more state fair tickets because it starts tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so who do we have on the line? Sue from Franklin. Good morning, Sue. Welcome to Asco's Wisconsin. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So I will remind you how we play this game. I have picked three different new foods that are introduced to uh they're new this year and you after i give you the description of all three we'll pick one that you're going to eat the entire thing once one you're going to eat every day for the rest of your life and one you are going to never eat and banish to hell got it yes ma'am all right number one the maple bacon turtle on a stick this thing looks only I could show you a picture of it. What, what, is it bad? Whew, a Wisconsin twist on Freeze's famous turtle on a stick. The maple bacon turtle on a stick is a pretzel stick resting on salted pecans topped with homemade car caramel and milk chocolate, along with freshly smoked and caramelized bacon from Double B's Barbecue, a local West Dallas business, and a maple flavor drizzle. So that is number one. Maple bacon turtle on a stick. The next one is a drink, the Ferris Mule. Huh. The Ferris Mule is a non-alcoholic mule 
crafted with fresh blackberries, ginger beer, freshly squeezed lime juice, and agave nectar, all of which is handshaken and poured over ice. Garnished with fresh blackberries, a rosemary sprig, and lime wheel, the Ferris Mule takes a summer classic drink and elevates it with a fresh fair time twist. Wow, that's really complicated. It's a, you know, it's a mock- a, I, a- if this is a mocktail that I could drink that I would maybe be on board with. That's true. All right. And the final one, pretty straightforward. Vegan brat slider. <laughs> Pickled onions and housemade slaw with a plant-based barbecue brat. All right, Sue, which one are you eating the entire mm-hmm. thing once? Wow, that's a lot of sugar in those first two. Um, I think I would probably drink. No, I would eat the the first one. So you eat the, the first thing. one, but eat one the, time. the turtle. maple bacon turtle on a stick, one time treat. Even if you go into a diabetic shock. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Great. <laughs> and then, which one are you eating every day for the rest of your life? I would have to take the uh, the drink every day. I'm not going to say that I wouldn't maybe slip some vodka in there sometimes, but you know. good for you. Just too. to give it a little more <laughs> oomph, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. No one's telling you you can't maybe do that. Every day, but. So you have no interest in ever having the vegan broad slider. Never. <laughs> that does not even sound, no. <laughs> have you had any of the impossible meat or the beyond meat, or have you ever tried any of that stuff? I think so, yeah, um, at some point. Now, it, some of them are okay, but yeah, I don't, the other one just didn't sound very good. See, and for me too, I think if I didn't know what it was, I would be more inclined to have an open mind. If you, someone just right. lied to if, you? If someone just said, here's a great <laughs> burger, you know, we just made these great burgers. And and then I would be, you know, more inclined to try it with an open mind. But But once I know that it's tofu or whatever, or, you know, some weird, is Alligator that how you feel meat? about the camel fries, like the camel cheese fries? Had you not known it was camel meat, you think you would have gone for it? Is it camel toes? I don't know. It's just camel meat. Remember that was one of the answers. Yeah. Would you, Sue? Would you have the? Were, are you any interest in trying the camel the camel cheese fries? Yeah. No, I heard that yesterday. I thought no. I, I don't think I could get past it. <laughs> knowing what it was. Well, to be fair, the one that you're going to have for the rest of your life, the Ferris Mule, that one, the drinkies. So oh. they had so that there's the Sporkies, and, and the this drinkies. was the first year that they also had another complimentary competition for the best drinks, and the Ferris Mule won. So maybe when you go with your tickets, you'll have to try one out and maybe sneak some of your little vodka in there. I, I maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite thing to do at the fair, Sue? I think just walk around and people watch. We haven't been in a couple of years, so I'm kind of excited to uh, to to check it out. My husband and I both retired now, so we have nothing to do next week, you know? Awesome. And is there anything that you always eat when you go to the fair, Sue? Um, I think corn yep. and drink a beer. Yeah. My, my husband is real big on the baked potatoes. Oh. Which is oh, not, yeah, those are good. Which is not like, an, I mean... You can always get a baked potato, but it's that's that's his thing. He's got to have the baked potato, which is you know, which is good. No Everyone's judgment. got their thing. No, no don't, judgment. Don't yuck anyone's yum. I'm not. I'm not thing. yucking on the baked potato. Yuck. All right, Sue. Thank you so much for listening and playing and calling in. Don't I hope hang you up. have so much fun. Jane's gonna get your information, uh, but can't wait to hear how much fun you have. All right. Well, oh, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Um, well, that'll about do it for today. Uh, the one last thing we didn't get to, which I think will be interesting. That I'm sure other shows will will talk about, but as the Derek Van Orden stuff has not, it's still in the news, and it's interesting as it should be. Do you think so? Yes. Why am I just kind of like because his behavior was deplorable? It was deplorable, but it's for I, an adult and I think who is a member of Congress. I think it's the fact that he also won't just mea culpa and like say I, I had too up. much. I had too much to drink, and I screamed at a bunch of kids. And because, yeah, because I think he he canceled something yesterday that he was supposed to do a press conference and didn't do it. But now Brian Stile, Republican, um, is consulting with Capitol Police about surveillance footage of Van Orden of his confrontation with teenage uh, Senate pages. And so I am kind of surprised that there hasn't been any. That maybe we'll get to see a video about this. Well, and I, it's my understanding that uh, Mark Pocan is the one who wrote to Stile saying, hey, you guys were willing to turn over all this security footage from January 6th to Fox News. I think we should see just how up in these kids' faces our elected representative got. Actually was. 
So it'll be interesting. We'll see if that uh, unfolds in the next couple of days. But I don't know. I'm surprised. I guess I'm just a little surprised it's still in the news. Well, things do cycle by pretty quickly. But again, I think it was even if you're on the opposite side of the aisle, that is just not acceptable behavior for an adult. I know who's an elected official. We should. I'm not making excuses for him. I'm just in in the range of things of bad behavior that comes and goes of people like it makes news for a second and then it's on to the next thing. That's more of what it is, is like, I'm surprised that this is stuck compared to all of the other bad behavior we typically have been hearing about coming out of Congress. But that's because he's from Wisconsin. So you think it's just you don't think they're talking about this in Missouri? No, (laughs) I think it's because we're from Wisconsin and we don't like that. That's probably true. What happened? We still want to believe Wisconsin nice, right? Which I do believe in. But that's also a big shock there that I believe in that. All right. Well, we will be back on Monday, but we'll have some good reruns tomorrow and Thursday. Thank you for calling. Thank you for texting. Thank you for being part of the show and listening every day. We couldn't do this show without you. Uh, come back Monday when we'll be live again. This has been As Goes Wisconsin. Wisconsin.